Welcome to Orbital Dynamics Part 44. This part is based on excerpts from the book, The Mechanical Universe. So far we've assumed a spherical Earth. It makes the math simpler. A sphere is a close approximation to the true figure of the Earth, but it's not how the Earth is really shaped. The Earth is an oblate spheroid. An oblate spheroid is formed by rotating an ellipse around its minor axis, forming an equator along its major axis. The Earth is formed this way because of its rotation. The Earth's crust is only 5 to 10 kilometers thick under the oceans and 30 to 50 kilometers thick on land. Compare that to the mean radius of 6,371 kilometers. The crust is 1% of the thickness of the Earth. The interior is fluid molten rock or magma. When it spins, the centrifugal force forces it to bulge along the equator. In fact, we can tell the density of the interior based on how much the Earth's equator bulges. Scientists determined that the inner core of the Earth had to be a solid iron-nickel alloy because the bulge was not as pronounced as it would have been had the interior been all fluid. 6,371 kilometers is a mean radius. The radius at the equator is as high as 6,384 kilometers, and the radius at the poles is 6,353 kilometers. That's a difference of 31 kilometers, a half a percent difference. While that may seem small, the effects are noticeable. According to this equation, the rotational effects at the equator are slightly more pronounced because at the equator, you're slightly farther from the center of rotation. That means you're rotating at a slightly, slightly greater velocity, which makes you slightly lighter than you would be rotating on a sphere. According to this equation, the force of gravity diminishes as you get farther away from the center of mass. The equator is 31 kilometers farther away from the center of the Earth than the poles, which means you'd experience slightly less gravitational acceleration. Lastly, if you're at the equator, more of Earth's mass is beneath you. Being farther away from the center of the Earth decreases the gravitational acceleration. The increase in mass will increase the gravitational acceleration. All of this assumes a constant density of the Earth, which is not the case. The density varies. We don't have a way to measure the density at specific depths. We derive densities by measuring gravitational acceleration at various points on the surface of the Earth. At the equator, the outward centrifugal force produced by the Earth's rotation counteracts Earth's gravity by about 0.3% at the equator, and we derived that in the previous section. If you add to that the equatorial bulge, sea level gravitational acceleration increases from about 9.780 meters per second squared at the equator to about 9.832 meters per second squared at the poles. So an object will weigh about half a percent more at the poles than the equator. Apparent gravity on the Nevado Huscarian Mountain in Peru at 9 degrees south latitude is 9.764 meters per second squared. That's about a 0.7% difference compared to gravity at the Arctic Ocean at 90 degrees north latitude. In large cities, gravity ranges from 9.766 meters per second squared in Kuala Lumpur and Singapore, which are near the equator, to 9.825 meters per second squared in Oslo and Helsinki, which are about at about 60 degrees north latitude. The same two factors influence the direction of gravity. At the poles, or on the equator, the gravitational force points towards the center of the Earth. Anywhere on the Earth away from the, equator, from the equator or poles, effective gravity points not exactly towards the center of the Earth, but rather perpendicular to the surface of the geoid, which, due to the flattening shape of the Earth, is somewhat towards the opposite pole. If we take into account the deflection due to the inertia in the gravitational acceleration, if we take into account the deflection due to inertia, the gravitational acceleration is in the direction of the opposite pole and tends toward what it would be on a spherical Earth. Not all deformations are caused by rotation. The gravity of the moon and sun cause the Earth's surface to undulate. The effect is most pronounced for the oceans. Here we're showing an elliptical spheroid. The Earth's equator may itself be an ellipse rather than a circle. This has been a matter of scientific controversy for years. Suffice it to say that the figure of the Earth is complex. Up to now I've presented concepts that could be characterized mathematically. They assume spherical masses that are equivalent to point masses and orbits that follow elliptical paths. The actual physics is more complex and for much of it cannot be described with simple mathematical models. Another interesting aspect of a spheroid Earth is altitude. 
another interesting aspect of an elliptical sphere right Earth is altitude. Mount Everest stands 8,848 meters above sea level. That's 29,029 feet. The summit of Chimborazo, Ecuador's tallest mountain, stands at 6,268 meters, which is 20,564 feet above sea level. Mount Everest is known as the tallest mountain on Earth. Mount Chimborazo is not even the tallest in South America. That's Mount Aconcagua in Argentina, standing at 6,960 meters. All this is measured from sea level, which is an average level for the surface of one or more of the Earth's oceans. It's the midpoint between a mean low and a mean high tide at a particular location. There isn't a clear reference for sea level. If we measure these prominences from the center of the Earth, we get a different result. Chimborazo is at one degree south latitude, almost on the equator. It's almost right on the equator. Everest is at almost 28 degrees north. The summit of Chimborazo in Ecuador is 6,384 kilometers from the Earth's center. Everest is 6,382 kilometers from the Earth's center. Chimborazo is 2,168 meters, or 7,113 feet, farther. Measured from the center of the Earth, Chimborazo is the highest point.